Each morning in Baton Rouge, we rise to meet opportunity. We carry the weight of responsibility proudly. We choose our paths. We move fast and we fly high. We light the way for others to follow. We make it happen. But what really matters is what happens when we land at home. Baton Rouge Metropolitan Airport. Fly e This is Inside the Jaguar Nation, presented by Russell Law Firm. How y'all doing tonight? Welcome to Inside the Jaguar Nation. I'm Morgan Beard alongside Aaron Lee. That's right, Morgan. And we start at the top, yeah. the Southern women's basketball team on top of the swag and looking to keep the good times rolling. On to the bluff we go. Women's Hoop Saturday night. Lady Jaguars hosting Arkansas Pine Bluff. And the Jags already up second half. Rihanna Green off of the miss. Layup, but a lyric Scott cleans up the glass. She would finish with 16 points. Now Richardson off the feed gives it to Faith Ottawa, who, bring, who brings the lead all only to 10, Morgan. Yeah, that's right, but it was a lyric Scott's night for the Jags. She was doing everything here. She finds Brown with Thompson on the sweet dish to close this one out. But the Jags get the win, 59-46, and they're now over 500. You know, I never saw her get 16 points. Wow. I mean, that might be her career high. Um, Lyric has been really playing well for us. I mean, out of all the kids that I played tonight, she probably had the best um, three-day practices. Um, she's been consistent. Um, a Lyric is a natural score. Wow, Sandy Pugh there uh, acting like she didn't even notice that Lyric Scott putting up the kind of night she did. Uh, maybe a little bit of surprising there, but hey, career high for Scott, 16 points. Yeah, it was a big su surprise because you had Skyla Obeer, Samantha Duncan only putting up eight points. And then their leading scorer, Brianna Green, she only had six points, two assists, two steals, but she had seven rebounds on the night. Hey. She's usually putting up 24, 25 a night. So She may not have scored as much as she normally does, but you mentioned what the assist, the steals, and rebounds, and everything. Filling the stat, she's still making her presence felt out there even though she didn't score as many points but hey team effort and that's when a lyric Scott came in there for him and did it here's where coach can be happy about 22 points in the paint to their 12 points yeah so that was a good thing and then 26 points off the bench you know she's been looking for the bench to to come in and they finally delivered so let's move on to the men's and see how they did against Arkansas Pine Bluff as coach Morris Scott looking for another home win taking on those Golden Lions Second half, Jags down four, but Emmanuel Shepard with the step back jumper gets the two. He would finish with 15 points. And then he comes here flying in like an eagle. Finish it with another two, Morgan. Yeah, but the Golden Lions trying to keep it close here. Christian Robertson getting the jumper to go. Count that one. They would have the lead, but the man of the night, Eddie Reese's pieces, baby, eating it all up on this one. That ball hitting every part of the rim. Reese dropped in a team high 19 points and left the Jaguars in comeback fashion, 70 to 62. He was just so poised tonight. Uh, it was probably one of the first games that you see him kind of slow himself down. Uh, actually, he I let him call a couple plays. Uh, he's kind of taking a little ownership of being out there and being a, kind of trying to be a leader a little bit. So I kept, I left him out there a little longer and I, you know, I went to him, I said, you know, are you okay? And as long as he was okay, I was going to leave him out there because he was playing well tonight. Uh, as you can tell by the numbers, I mean, 19, six assists and one turnover. Uh, that's a pretty good game, when you, especially when you play the full 40 minutes. Hey, you know, it's a good game too when we don't even mention Jared Sam, Mr. Double Double. That's he right. did it again, 14 points. 11 rebounds. Quiet double-double. Quiet, hey, uh, still uh, effective uh, nonetheless, and that was just a part of the bigger shooting night for the Jaguars here right there on the second line, huh, Aaron? Yeah, they shot 50% in the second half, which is a big deal for them. They've been Ooh. looking for some consistency. They were 12 on two uh, on second chance points, so, hey, they were getting those loose balls, they were getting no put-back rebounds, and they outscored the Golden Lions in the paint 24-18. to 24-18, 20-2 second chance points, man. That's almost as good. As a human jukebox, Aaron, and that's what we're taking a listen and a look at right here. A little throwback to football, but hey, time for the first break. But later in the show, softball opening up their season this past week all the way in NOLA. But coming right up, after the big win, the Jaguars will select our performer of the week. And the this is Inside the Jaguar Nation, presented by Russell Law Firm. 
That's right. Welcome back to Inside the Jaguar Nation. Morgan Beard alongside the man known as Aaron Lee. And Aaron, it's time for that Performer of the Week. Yes, it is, Morgan. And it's no surprise. We're going to Mr. What did you call him? Reese's, Reese's Pieces, Pieces yeah. himself, Eddie Reese. <laughs> Play my uh, role to the best of my ability. Coach keep pre pre uh, preaching to me to stay uh, to stay with the team, stay poised, and don't just you know settle for shots. Try to get the open guy. I'm just trying to be a leader, keeping everybody head up, staying poised, don't get down on my teammates or myself. Uh, always bring a uh, positive energy to practice and to the games. Just staying positive with my team. I don't know, just being all in and practice. Just start from practice. Just being all in together and uh, bringing the same intensity. Coach preaching every time we got to give it one ten. 40 minutes, and I felt like for the most part, we, we were working. Second half, we came out and slowed the best player down. Everything worked out. Now, Morgan, I missed this segment. We haven't done this since football season, and I thought we should bring it back at this right time. Don't you think? Oh, yeah. Uh, very on Brian Allen getting his Jay Billis on a little bit, busting out those tools, busting out the, the clicker, the pointer. Have you uh, the film room, baby? A special film yeah, room. Yeah, basketball edition. Brian, what do you have for us? Hey guys, look, road wins, they're hard to come by on the road, especially in the swag. And this is a rival. You're talking about Jackson State. You're up, by the way. You're up by six with 17 seconds left. All you have to do is make another free throw. It's out of reach. The game is over. You can head back to Baton Rouge with the W. Even if you don't, no matter what, look, from the very beginning, probably elementary school, junior high, when it comes down to it, when you got a big lead like this, you're up six. Even if something goes wrong and they chunk up a three just do not foul that's that's the first and only rule that you were taught so let's go ahead and roll the tape right here okay unfortunately you you missed the free throw and down they come they're gonna throw up a three you know this you know this foul are and you can see the disappointment in his face right there chris thomas he's a redshirt senior this is these are not lessons that a redshirt senior should be learning right here unfortunately this is just how Southern's season has gone. Now, okay, so you're up three. They made all three foul shots. All you need to do, inbounds the ball. Game is over, right? Oh, boy. That cannot happen. That cannot happen against a good team. Unfortunately, Jackson State, or maybe fortunately for Southern, Jackson State just awful at free throws right there. Eddie Reese on the inbounds. You do not inbound the ball under the basket. You get from side to side. Now. Southern right here, final play, Jackson State, elevator screen right there. They can tie it up with the three. And that call, to be honest, I have never seen a call that late. You watch it again right here. A little bit of an acting job right there by Mr. Reese. But hey, Eddie Reese almost basically kind of absolving himself of that. And you can see the expression from the Jackson State head coach, bewildered. I have never seen a call like that. Fortunately for Southern, they get away with the win. But these are the lessons that Morris Scott is going to be playing over and over and over. We talked to him later. He said, look, I don't run him more. I don't yell at him. These, these are teachable moments. These are things that you need to have so that when you go to the Southwestern Athletics uh, Conference Tournament that you don't make the same mistakes. And somehow you can find that March Madness win and somehow get a bid there from the SWAC. Guys? As Brian broke it down, we got the human jukebox breaking it down for us as well. Coming up next, some familiar faces are back on a bluff for a special tribute. Oh, we're going back and partying, uh, I guess, 1992, 1993. But coming up next, though, right after the break, we're giving you a baseball preview as it's a new era. No more Kador, man, in those, uh, the third baseline there. Southern, the new face, taking the charge there for the baseball team. We'll be right back here on Inside the Jaguar Nation. You're watching Inside the Jaguar Nation, presented by Russell Law Firm, with Brian Holland, Morgan Beard, Ashley Lyotis, and Aaron Lee. We've got the whole team doing big things here on Inside the Jaguar Nation, and every week it's that time Aaron Lee letting us know what else is going on around campus. Well, it seemed like yesterday that basketball season started, but as we come to a close, both the men's and women's team are trying to make a push in a swag. Here's what's next. The men's b-ball team will face off tomorrow, February 10th versus Mississippi Valley State. 
at 4 p.m. Then the Jaguars hit the road to face Alabama State on Saturday, February 17th at 5.30. Now onto the women's side, they too will score off with Mississippi Valley State tomorrow um, at uh, 2 p.m. And then they will also go on the road to see Alabama State Saturday, February 17th at 3. We have the Jaguars uh, track team that will face off in the SWAC Indoor Championships this Wednesday, February 14th. And to close it out, bowling Friday, February 16th, they will compete in the SWAC East Roundup Tournament. That's all we have for this week's calendar. Morgan? Hey, and uh, a lot on the calendar coming up soon is that baseball team. Baseball season coming in full swing before we know it. And it's the start of a new era. No more Roger Cador. In comes Carrick Jackson as the head coach in the Jaguars open their season up this weekend in New Orleans. And they have a mixture of young and returning guys. They're still trying to find an identity here, Aaron. Yeah, over the offseason, Coach Jackson expressed that this season will be a process and they probably won't see a return on their investment until the end of the season. We spoke with Coach Jack Jackson this week about his expectations for this season. You know what, I think it's, it's one of the deals where I've, I've told our team that I'm not really worried about the idea of us getting caught up in winning more. Um, I, I want us to play better. Uh, and I think that in playing better, I think the wins will come. But I think if we focus on the idea of, hey, we need to win more games without kind of perfecting that process of getting to putting ourselves in a position to win more games, um, th that a lot of things can get lost. So our really our focus is just on, hey, let's get better every day. Um, and that's gone for this team and, and where we're at. I think that's going to be a gradual process that we won't be playing our best until the end of the year. All right, the women's Southern softball team started their season this past week in New Orleans due to some bad weather, but that didn't stop their shine as they won big over Howard University 10-1. Here's Coach John Garris speaking on their win. Getting off to a good start, and you're absolutely right. What a great place. What a beautiful venue. Um, what a great day for our first trip, and I sure hope it isn't our last. Well, you're very excited when you see things translate right over into a game, and there's zero game slippage or, or a small amount of game slippage. And, you know, our pitchers have worked so hard with Coach Monroe, and in that particular case, Aubrey just kind of picked up where she was last year, and, and Aubrey did such a good job for us last year, and we look for great things from her again this year. A win for the softball team and a win for the human jukebox as we always bring you their sweet sound. But after the break, we have some Danny Johnson news. That man, Ooh. Danny Johnson, coming up. You don't want to miss this. We'll be back with more Inside the Jaguar Nation. This is Inside the Jaguar Nation, presented by Russell Law Firm. That's right, inside the Jaguar Nation, Morgan Beard, Aaron Lee, uh, as we have been all season, all week, you know, whatever, we're always here. But uh, we always give football a lot of attention. We have to. Nothing wrong with that, huh? We got to. Yeah. Look, of course, it wouldn't be a show without it. Nope. But we have to announce that our guy, our guy, Number Danny one. Johnson, is still <laughs> proving the critics wrong. Danny Johnson recently got announced that he got an invite to the NFL Combine, Ooh. something he's been working for this offseason, and he's going to be representing the Southern Jaguars in Indianapolis this year. And, you know, he's coming off that senior bowl performance, had a couple pass breakups and got some action there late in the fourth quarter, uh, a good week of practice. So, uh, obviously, a good chance for him to kind of keep this momentum going and shine in Indianapolis, but he's not the only one getting his shine, huh, recently? No, he's not the only one. Look, how about over the weekend, the 92-93 Southern Jaguar team upset number four Georgia Tech was honored this week at, the, at this game this past weekend. I got a pleasure to speak to some of the guys, Morgan. Yeah, uh, not before, though. They participated in an alumni game directly after the men's Wish game. Which those guys can still ball. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, 92-93. It may be 20-something years ago, but uh, trust me, they got game. They proved it. And uh, it also features a Southern guard who, by the way, is Walter Payton's nephew, Terry Timms. It's been something that we wanted to do for a long time. And just getting back on the court, being back in this environment, it's one of those feelings that you really can't describe. But it's, it's one of those feelings that everybody that's an athlete wants to have coming back home, somewhere where you played and, you know, did some things that other people didn't do. And it's just a great feeling just to be back in this part of town. All right, as they broke it down and got low on the court, here are the human jukebox getting low for us. 
Coming up next, more good news for the Southern Jaguars. Hall of Fame? We'll be right back with more Inside the Jaguar Nation. This is Inside the Jaguar Nation, presented by Russell Law Firm. Welcome back to Inside the Jaguar Nation. We are about to close the show down. Last block and some little TV terms for people out there. Yep. Uh, we already looked at the schedule, but hey, it's Sunday. We have a whole week ahead coming up. So let's take a look back at it again, just in case anyone's just joining us right now. Aaron, what you got? Yeah, let's check that out again. So we got the men's basketball team playing tomorrow at Mississippi Valley State at 4 p.m. And then they travel to Alabama State Saturday, February 17th at 5.30. Let's move on to the women's. They also will face off with Mississippi Valley State tomorrow at 2, an early one. And again, they will travel to Alabama State at 3 p.m. Let's move on to some track and field. We got the SWAC Indoor Championships coming up in Alabama this Wednesday. And finally, uh, we're talking some bowling, Aaron. They're going to compete in the 2018 SWAC East Roundup Tournament Friday. February 16th in Mississippi, but hey, the last, uh, definitely not least here on the show, some awards and honors starting to pile up, and now it's a former Jaguar star, Harold Carmichael. Aaron, what you got? That's right, Carmichael was part of the seven-member class inducted to the Black College Hall of Fame. Carmichael owns the major C uh, receiving record in the Philadelphia's franchise history, all-time leader in receptions, receiving yards, and touchdowns, Morgan. Whoo, that is a... Hey. Uh, a nice resume there, to say the least. He was also a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame 1970s All-Decade Team and the 1980 Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year. And watching the NFL Honors recently, you know how special that award is. He's also a member of the SWAC Hall of Fame. Carmichael started his career, get this, a little Baker Mayfield, uh, shall we, a walk-on at Southern University in 1967. He graduated from Southern in 1970 before being drafted by those Eagles in the seventh round of the 1971 NFL Draft. So, as we come back here, a great story there. Walk on, seventh round pick, and now Hall of Famer in just about everything you can imagine. What does Coach Odom say? Chop wood, carry water. <laughs> He's that example of that. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And good for the younger viewers out there that may have not kept up with him or know the history of Southern. Do a quick Google search. Do some research. Right now, the Jaguars are winning. That's a lot of great news yeah. over there on the bluff right now. And, hey, we're going to have a lot more great news coming up next week. But that's all the time we have for this show. For Aaron Lee, I'm Morgan Beard. Once Another again, show, Morgan. inside the Jaguar Nation. We'll see you guys next week. See you next week.